80% of dudes rapping, they ain't nice as me 98% ain't live the same type of life as me The judge gave me life and then they sent me where the life is be That level forward depth and vice, the type of stuff they like to see Two choices, fight or flee, I refuse to die a chump I've never been a mark, but damn it's scary when that riot jump I've seen dudes cry, get pumped, or some sexually brutalized I knew a dude who lost his life and he was only doing five Year long racial fights when homie all you do is ride Lonely days and nights have been a whole cause in suicide From the moment you arrive, you see the Mexican Mafia AB skinheads with big giant swastikas Pro-black philosophers, the BGF, the Kumi And Muslims who will murk you from the nation to the Sunni That MS was loony, quick to ride up on they rival Even Christians went to church, hide knives up in a Bible Political and tribal, the Crips and Damus The Long Beast, the Hubs and the Dubs and the Grooves The IE, the Bakersfield the day go pie rules the hustlers quick to roll the gangsters don't move whatever click you choose say what's cracking youtube it's your boy 16 to life and i'm back like i'm on a pro violation your damn now for those of y'all that's new to my page in 1994 i got arrested i was eventually sentenced to 16 years plus life and i served 24 years straight in the california prison system during those times i accumulated some good stories I'm going to share some with y'all today. If you happen to like the story, definitely be sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe. Most importantly, hit that notification bell. That way, anytime I drop a story, you will be notified ASAP and you can hop in it whenever you're ready. You will be told. You will be notified ASAP and you can hop on it whenever you're ready. Now, let's get right into this video. For those of you guys who don't know, Especially when I first entered prison in 1996, the California gangbanging culture was an entirely different monster. It was a beast, you know, and um, a lot of times in prison or in county jail, it will be the first time you have dudes from opposing gangs to be um, within close proximity of each other. Right. And so um, for the most part, you know, back when I first came to prison, um, Dudes try to be cordial, right? You try to be respectful because back then gang banging, like I say, was it was a different it was a different beast, right? You had guys in the streets who was really into it, you know, going at it with enemies, um, shooting and killing and stuff. Outside of just the general crip and blood beef, you know, back then especially, you know, any crip, regardless of where the blood was from, they was natural enemies. But you do have some hoods. Some crip and blood hoods who are closer to each other and due to being closer to each other, they beef on a more regular basis. And due to the fact they do beef on a more regular basis, of course, there is more animosity between those two gangs. But then you also had back in those days, you had certain crip gangs who beefed heavily with other crip gangs. And so so when I first came to prison, due to the fact that you did have a potential powder keg um, bubbling. Dudes did try to have a sense of, of mutual respect out on the yard, you know. Um, there were common places like the basketball court, the workout pal, stuff like that, where dudes tried not to be um, disrespectful, right? Uh, because back then, like I say, I call it traditional gang banging. And, you know, bloods didn't like hearing the word cuz and vice versa. You know, crips didn't like hearing the word blood. So, those words mentioned alone was just was enough to have, you know, have dudes fighting then a potential riot kickoff between, you know, those two opposing gangs, man. So um, it was, you know, it was told to me. So when I first got to prison, hey, man, you listen, we know certain things we, we're not going to say, you know, out out in public or in neutral areas where, you know, it could be a lot of everybody. So let's say, you know, a blood happened to go to the chow hall and he seen one of his homies, you know, he wouldn't holler. Hey, what's up, blood? Because now it's a bunch of crips around and, you know, they considered that disrespectful and once again, vice versa, you know. But of course, that didn't stop dudes from talking the way they talk amongst their homies. Now, of course, now, if you had two crips in the cell, you know, they going to talk how they talk, right? And so a lot of people outside of the California gangbanging culture may have been introduced to a certain vernacular uh, by Crip Mac. Sir? Four Junior Jumble Jacks, an order of five fives, the things you get from McDonald's that go with every hamburger Happy Meal. You know, Crip Mac, a lot of people assumed had his own 
Ebonics and way of talking right, but you have you have had Crips and Bloods talking similar to that um, for a long, long time. You know, the difference would they would say things in reference to their particular hood, right? If they didn't happen to be from Crip Max hood, they still, you know, you had oh say okay, so you had Bloods who when they talk. You know, a lot of times if they happen to say a word that starts with C, they'll replace it with a B. And you have Crips who do the same thing. You know, I know uh, I've seen something on YouTube where somebody had went through the drive through and he said, hey, man, you know, he went to McDonald's and he said, can I get a box of uh, a chocolate bit bookies? You know, because uh, he he didn't want to say chocolate chip cookies. Thanks for choosing McDonald's. Can I take your order, please? Uh, yeah, I, um, I want a Big Mac, uh, a large bulk. Uh, 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 hold on, sir. Excuse me. A, a large what? A large boat. A large coke. That's what I said. I said the same thing you said. A large boat. Okay, sir. Anyway, okay. A large coke. Go on with your order, please. Okay, and let me get a six-piece bacon nugget. Uh, uh, uh hold on. A, a biggie-sized chicken nugget. No, ma'am. I said a six-piece bacon nuggets. You mean a six-piece chicken nugget? I'm saying that's the same thing. I'm telling you. That, look. Okay, I'm, sir. I'm okay, saying, sir. E anything else? Whew, boy. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me get three Barkley Built Bookies. Barkley Built Bookies? What? What? Three Barkley Built Bookies. Three what chocolate is, chip cookies? That's what I said. Why, why everybody want to set trip? That's, that's okay, what, sir. Okay, okay, okay. So let me go over this again. You want a Big Mac, a large bulk, a mm. six piece bacon nugget, uh -huh. and three chocolate built bookies. Oh, bloods. That's what I want. That's it. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't know why. Please pull around to the first window, sir. Just and some people might be laughing and thinking that's funny, but you literally and seriously do have dudes who talk like that you know you have you have like i said on both sides you have crips and bloods they are so um deeply involved in their in their you know in their gang banging beliefs that they do stuff like that right and so like i said you know um in prison in these neutral areas you would try to you know there was a, a respect thing going on so yes you would have dudes you know try to be mindful of not saying anything that could potentially lead to um you know some BS jumping off but then can I get a uh can I get a box of uh you also had dudes who had been talking like that for years and years and years and you know sometimes they wasn't they wouldn't say things to intentionally be disrespectful but that's how they would talk right um so it reminds me of a time when I was sitting in uh in the Riverside County Jail we was playing dominoes um there was a dude at the table, right? And he happened to be um, at the table with a dude from his opposing gang, right? From a, a gang that his gang beefed with, right? And so uh, I don't believe that uh, he done this intentionally, but it, it, it led to a fight, you know? So we playing dominoes, and I don't want to even, you know, of course, I'm not just to say the word or whatever, but the dude, he called, uh, he scored some, he scored points playing dominoes, right? So um, the points that he scored, you know, uh, uh, was 20 points, but instead of saying 20, he said something that was disrespectful, right? Uh, a disrespectful word that some gang members use for the word 20, right? And so, uh, now when he, when he said it, of course, the dude that he was playing against automatically, uh, felt slighted. So the dude told him, hey, yeah, hey, homie, look, I need that. I need that. And dude was like, oh, homie, my bad. He's like, no, homie, you didn't, you didn't diss the hood. So, you know, they got up. Uh, they went to the back, and they squabbled up. You know what I'm saying? And so that's how that's how it happens because, um, and <coughs> excuse me. And throughout and throughout my journey doing time, I've seen similar situations happen uh, happen uh, a lot of different times, right? So, like I said, you know, they tried to have these neutral areas, but sometimes it didn't, it didn't always, it didn't always work out like that, you know. I remember a time, too, in Ironwood, on the B-yard, uh, you happen to have a blood back there talking to one of his homies. And he was talking to him, and he said, oh, homie, you gonna treat me like that? You treat me like a, and he said the disrespectful word for Crips. Now, he wasn't talking to no Crips, he was talking to his homie. But it happened to be a crypt there, you know, a crypt there. And he he heard it. And so basically he 
You know, and even though him and the blood, you know, they talked, they had a somewhat cool relationship. He said, hey, homie, that's disrespectful. That's how you're going to get at me. I need that. So they went back, you know, they went somewhere and ended up catching the fade. And to my understanding, the blood got the best of the crip, but uh, the crip felt slighted by him even using that word. He said, oh, you know, okay. He felt like, you know, me and you, we talk, homie, you know, you act like you have half cool. And then you will turn around and say this, you know, and, and I knew both of them, right? Um... And I don't necessarily believe the blood was doing it intentionally, but like I say, sometimes when people have 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 um have gotten used to talking in a certain way, sometimes they'll they have been saying the word so long naturally that you know when talking sometimes they say it. You know, I remember another incident. Um, and sometimes you know in prison, people have to be very mindful uh, of this. And I'm talking about <coughs> excuse me. And I'm talking about people in prison, right? Uh, a lot of times you will have dudes sitting around telling war stories, talking about what they did in the hood and this and that, right? And like I said, you'll have a lot of gang members who are, for the first time, in the company or around other people they don't get along with, whether it be Bloods or Crips. And <coughs> this dude is sitting on the side of a building talking to one of his homies uh, about, I guess, going, putting in uh, some work on a gang they didn't get along with, right? And so, in the midst of him telling the story, he disses the gang that they didn't get along with. Um, just so happened, maybe about four or five feet away, it was a dude from that particular gang who heard the diss. And, of course, you know, he wanted he wanted the fade. So, they go in the cell. The dude who dissed, who dissed his hood, he ended up getting the best of that fight, right? But, um... It happens like that from time to time, man. And, you know, for for people who are not familiar with the California gang banging culture, man, it's extremely vicious. You know, you have to really watch what you say, you know. Um, I remember one time I was sitting in the county jail. I was playing dominoes and uh they had a they had a they had a um a vending machine in the day room, right? And so uh I told a dude, hey, man, get me, you know, I, I gave you my card so we could get me and him something. And I wanted a particular type of candy bar, right? And I told him the type of candy bar to get me. Just so happened that that was the disrespectful term for a dude that was sitting at the table. And the dude got upset. I said, hey, man, listen, I didn't know you was from there. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, you know, I'm, hey, I'm, and so the dude ended up, you know, he ended, he ended up calming down, but it's an extremely vicious, you know, it's an extremely vicious culture, right? And so let me give you guys a brief idea for those who may not be familiar, right? And even in doing this, I have to be extremely careful because <coughs> I definitely don't want nobody to think that I'm being disrespectful, right? So let's just say if a dude happened to be from a game called Little place, you know, little place click or something like that. Now, the way they may diss that hood is other people who don't get along, because since it's the L and the P, they would find something that starts with LP and they would use that in 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 a disrespectful manner in describing that group. So they might say, oh, you from Lemon Pepper or something like that. You know, say a dude happened to be from a, a hood called um, Giant Boys. Right. So, of course, they may find something that starts with a G with a, a, a G and a B to disrespect that term. So some someone who didn't get along with the giant boys might say, oh, homie, uh, you from gingerbread? And in California, they get extremely, extremely creative with the with the food disses. Um, there are a lot of hoods that people use the food terminology to diss other gangs that they don't get along with. So yeah, it, it was extremely, it was extremely, uh, it was extremely rough. You know, I remember a good friend of mine in prison, right? Uh, and I unfortunately heard that he has, he has passed away, you know, now. And he was from a, he was from a gang. Keep in mind, like, you know, like I said, I'm from a small town. I'm from Bannon, right? So a lot of these gangs would be far away, an hour and a half away, you know, from the city of LA. So I wasn't familiar with some of the terminology that was used to diss some of these gangs because I didn't beef with some of these gangs. So, you know, uh, I remember uh, I happened to, we went to lunch, right? And I happened to ask this, this dude, I considered him a good friend, right? We went to lunch, right? And it was something in the lunch that I didn't want. And I asked him, hey, man, you want this this item right here? And, uh, you know, come to find out that just a, that normal item was a, the, the name for that normal item was a way that, 
people who didn't get along with his hood used to be disrespectful to his hood. So like I said, out in California, it's extremely, it's extremely tricky, right? And so for the most part, like I said, yes, in neutral places, you do have a certain amount of respect that's, 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 um, that people try to use, but I've had sellies, you know, from different gangs and we may be in the cell. And so when we're in the cell, if they happen to refer to a gang that they don't get along with, they'll they'll use the disrespectful term because that's what dudes, you know, that's what dudes do. When you are really in that life, you know, some dudes just flat out refuse to to, you know, say things that that, uh, you know, that they haven't been saying for a long time because it's it's other gangs and stuff that they don't get along with. And I know it seems childish to a lot of people. Uh, but, you know, you have some of these dudes who gangs who have been fighting each other for years and years and years and years, decades. You know, sometimes by the time a dude joins a gang, his hood is beefing with another gang. They've been beefing with another gang 15, 20 years. And the dude who just now joins the gang, he may not even exactly know why the beef is going on. But now due to the fact that he is a part of this gang and... His gang is beefing with another gang, so he just he just falls in line and, and follows suit, you know. So um, it's it's you know it's a trip, right? Because I would see certain gangs on the yard, and certain gangs they would have a well known, ugly long history of fighting, shooting, and killing opposing gangs, and now. Both these gangs are on the same yard. They're walking the child. They're literally, you know, um, three or four feet away sometimes. You know, at some prisons, when you go to the child hall, you can't you can't choose where you sit at. They just tell you they just tell you where to sit at. And sometimes in some of these instances, some of these dudes from opposing gangs, sometimes they would speak, sometimes they would be cordial, sometimes they would be more than cordial because as as with many gangs, right, in some big cities. You have a lot of different gangs who are literally maybe a block from each other, you know, maybe two or three blocks away from each other. So um, a lot of these dudes growing up knew each other in elementary school, you know, and then when they when they became of, of an age where they started um, gang banging and choosing certain gangs, you know, you may have a gang three block three blocks away from this gang and they don't get along, you know, but once again. They grew up together, you know, they went to elementary school, you know, grade school, and that's what makes some of these beefs so vicious and so deadly because everybody knows everybody. So, you know, when you're riding in this same community, you know, once the gangs start warring, and then a lot of these gangs at one point in time, you know, they was cool. And then uh, something may have caused them to, to fall out, and a lot of times it's over either a female or both gangs are at a party. And somebody says something or does something that somebody feels is disrespectful and it leads to a big giant beef, you know. But um, for those people who wonder, you know, when Bloods and Crips get locked up, uh, do they still beef and disrespect each other to a, cer to, a certain, to a certain degree? And so the point that I was trying to make was that sometimes when I see these gangs who have a well-known long feuding history with each other, and then you see them, you know, on the same prison yard with within close proximity of each other. Sometimes I would think, man, it's crazy that, you know, how these dudes can get along in here, but we can't get along on the streets or they can't get along on the streets. And I would look at it like, you know, um, if you can get along in here, it seemed like it would be easier to get along on the streets when you can go anywhere you want to go. You know, sometimes in prison, you'll have no choice but to be within close proximity to a um, to a person that you don't get along with, right? Uh, I remember I had a celly, um, and my celly. Okay, so uh, at one point in time, my celly, my the original celly that I had, he left and went home. So I'm in Ironwood. I'm in the cell by myself for a couple of days, and so a friend of mine. He came up to me, you know, he happened to be from a gang in L.A. And he told me, hey, uh, hey, chill, uh, I just got a homie that got here, man. And <coughs> is it cool if he move in the cell with you? Because they're trying to put him in this other cell and he's not going in there, you know. So he's refusing to go in there and they talking, they talking about sending him to the hole, you know. So this dude, his gang beliefs was so strict and he was not going to go into the cell with this other crip because their hoods beef with each other, you know. And so, uh. 
I told him, yeah, man, he can come on down here, you know. And so the dude moved into my cell, and we ended up becoming good friends. You know, he was a real good friend of mine, you know. And so, uh, yeah, but some of these dudes, gangs, gang beliefs are extremely strong. And so, you know, uh, like I said, uh, dudes try to get along in prison, but sometimes it doesn't always, it doesn't always happen like that. But anyway, you already know what it is. It's your boy 16 to life. Resume normal program.